an amazing day to be having this conversation on the day when England is contemplating a, a second lockdown. We've come to this point in this country because of a desperate failure to follow the science and to follow the precautionary principle. And that in relation to a crisis that is a lot more tractable than the climate crisis. What are the implications of this? So I've got five minutes, so I'm gonna cut straight to the chase. The brutal reality that hardly anyone is yet prepared to admit is that we are not going to deal adequately with the climate crisis. That is the tragic, horrific fact of the situation. Our climate is going to deteriorate. It is very likely going in important respects to break down. The only question is how rapid that process is and how terminal it is or isn't and what happens in our societies in response. In other words, the live question is, do our societies break down or not in response to this mother of all challenges? So what I want to say to you this afternoon is, please stop thinking that we are in a position to apply the precautionary principle adequately to this crisis, to prevent it, even to mitigate it in the kind of way that people have been talking about for recent years. We are not. We should try to do all those things. I've been doing all those things for years and will continue to do so. But it is time to admit that we are going to, to some considerable extent, fail to adequately address this crisis. If we can't adequately address COVID, there is no possibility that we're going to adequately address climate. What does this mean? It means that we have to adapt. It means that we have to get serious about adaptation because climate decline is coming. It is going to get worse in the lifetimes of virtually all of us. It is conceivable it could be turned around within the lifetimes of our children, but very unlikely. What kind of adaptation do we undertake? That is really the critical question. Do we undertake incremental adaptation? Do we try basically to keep our system going as it is? Do we do things like build higher levees and higher seawalls and hope that that will keep out the tides that are coming? Well, if we do that, then we are simply pushing ourselves further off the cliff. We are prolonging a system which is bound to fall apart and collapse even further beyond its natural life. What we need to do is to pursue what in my think tank greenhouse we call transformative adaptation. We need to seek to transform the system, to mitigate, to work with nature rather than against nature, and to create the better society that is still possible while recognizing that climate decline and ecosystem decline are to some considerable extent now baked in. So transformative adaptation is an extremely bold agenda, which has barely begun to be considered. It will be considered more and more during the 2020s. If it is considered adequately, there is some hope for the human race and there is some hope of avoiding civilizational collapse. If it is not considered inadequately, then there is not. What do I reckon are the chances? I think they're pretty slim, but I still think we should go for it and give it our best shot. And to the extent that we engage in transformative adaptation and get serious about recognizing that it is no longer credible to talk about ending or solving or reversing the climate emergency, uh, then we will make our lives and the lives of our children better. What kind of things does this mean in concrete terms? Let me end by saying something on, about that. So in terms of my example of uh, floods, sea level rise, etc., it means things like restoring wetlands, restoring in other parts of the world, mangrove uh, swamps. Uh, it might mean things like building um, uh, floating islands where people can uh, grow food or even live. In terms of growing food, which is absolutely critical, it means that we need to take seriously action on the international level and the national level. And because those levels are almost certainly going to act inadequate, inadequately, most crucially on the local level, to create community resilience. So my message to you this afternoon is please do not remain within the silo of thinking, hmm, what should uh, the government do? What, what should policymakers do? What new technologies are possible, et cetera? Those questions are not going to be adequate to address our future. Please start also to consider questions like, what are we gonna do in my community? What am I gonna do? 
to ensure that there is some kind of solid food supply going into the future? How are we going to create a future where the wake up call that coronavirus has been giving us will come through to create a transformatively adapted society in the face of the dire threat that we are now facing? That is the real question before us. Rupert, thank you very much indeed. That's a very powerful uh, statement.